Coffee. Morning. You guys ready? Give it a couple more minutes, let more people log in.
Yeah, well, why wait? Yeah, you're right. Why wait? You were here on time. All right. All right. All right. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Forex.today, the YouTube community of more than 20,000 foreign exchange traders. We gather here today to conduct technical and fundamental analysis with the overriding goal of planning our trades in advance because trading is risky, not appropriate for everyone. Your past performance, good or bad, is not necessarily indicative of future results. Please stay small, stay humble, focus on the long term, never risk money you cannot afford to lose. Hello, my name is Wayne. I salute you. All right, so what do you want to do today? Let me know. Stocks, right? You want to do the stock market? You want to do yen pairs, dollar pairs, Swissy pairs? I don't know. What's up? You commodities? Do you see Bitcoin? Holy smokes. Oil's on the move. Gold is on the move. Everything we've been talking about. So let me know what's on your mind, and I will do my best to cover that. I am a, a humble servant, so let me know how I can serve. Today I'm highlighting just briefly here a new service of mine called Tradars, Radars for Traders. This is the Forex Radar. This is the Crypto Radar. This is the Stock Radar. This is the Commodity <laughs> Radar. <laughs> This is the stock indice radars, All right? Just amazing, right? Yes, yes. But if you start using these tools, and in particular, these advanced tools that are a premium service, um, I highly, 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 highly recommend you use an ECN service as a broker. You want a broker that doesn't be book you. And in that case, you should switch over to a firm like Trader's Way. That is an ECN. Okay, so there is a relationship here. Um, I don't want to say any more than that. It's just that you're, if you're be booked, on some bucket shop, um, which are, that's what happens to most Forex traders, most retail Forex traders. Um, they may not like the fact that you are suddenly, I don't know, see, I can't promise that you're going to be better. Um, but anyways, you let's put it this way. It's always best to have a symbiotic relationship with your brokerage firm, which means if you benefit, they benefit. Let's just put it that way. All right, in 21 minutes and 50 seconds, we have uh, durable goods. And you might want to look at trading a dollar pair. And in fact, you want to see if it's going to come out less than expected or greater than expected. And if so, there are different probabilities of outcome. Ranging from as low as uh, 71% and going as high as 100% by looking at past performance. Now, that does not predict future results, and this is not a prediction, probability prediction. It's telling you how often it actually happened in the past. So, for example, if you look at 12 hours after this news in the past when the news was less than expected, and you're trading USD Yen, you can go through the entire history of how Tradars got to its conclusion. Okay, closed higher than the event. 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 Than the event. So for it. So on and so forth. So pretty cool stuff. Just ridiculous, awesome stuff. But again, if you're going to be using tools like this, you probably want an ECN. Also, you're going to... The, the, you're not going to have like wild volatilities in, sp in spread when you use an ECN. And so, okay. So when you, when you look at this in the minutes after the news, so let's go back to this. 
In the minutes after the news, you can get a wider spread if you use a typical um, Forex broker. Again, an ECN is not going to have that wild variance in spread. Um, but also, don't look at this. I changed the name. Remember how it was called the scalper? It was a scalper tool. No, I changed my mind. Like, for example, this analysis that we have on the USDN for when, uh, durable goods, when durable goods is less than expected, is a day trade. These are, de these are all day trades that very often can lead into a swing trade. So like, for example, now I can go out to this and it shows all the swing trades. These are last days after the event now. So it's not just a scalping tool. You, you can find the data that shows you days before the event and days after. And you can see swing trade up, swing trade up, swing trade up, swing trade up, swing trade up. And so it, uh, now I call it a sonar because it, it looks beneath the surface of the data and it goes down into the past and looks for patterns in the past where here a radar is looking for patterns that are emerging, that are coming toward us, that are above us. They're, they're not here yet, but they're coming versus what's happened in the past and what's hidden underneath. Cool, right? So now we have radars and sonars. Cool. But make sure you got an ECN. I'm telling you. All right, so let's see. Good morning to you. 46% of you are doing fine. 34, everything is awesome. 11, meh. And 7, could be better. Oh, well, good morning. And let me know I can, how I can help. So for those that are meh or could be better, let me know how I can help. Okay. Chrissy's like, I'm on, but... With Euro USD, and I'm up about 50 bucks. Any input on that? What? All right. Well, we could. You want to look at Euro dollar? Okay. Okay. Guess we can go here. Okay. Why Euro dollar? And you're long, right? So Okay. I wanna change it. That's not the right template. All right, so you have a trade plan from yesterday. So you should be approaching your target right now. Is that correct? Okay, because today's target is right here. And it kind of overlaps yesterday's target. Now, maybe you are trading this as a swing trade so i don't know like i don't know what your strategy is right but if it's a swing trade you're probably heading up to this confluence up in here so you're buying at 108 going to 110 right so it's like i don't know what your trade plan is day trading you're done uh, swing trading, uh, you're going to have a couple more waves to the upside. Yeah. Well, let's go and look at um, the indices right now. Euro is working its way up and dollar is just starting to show signs of weakness. But the reason I say why, why Euro dollar, how, why are you not on Euro Swissy? Right. So going back to Euro and then moving over to Euro Swissy. 
Okay, and I'll, I'll put the same template on there. Right, and that's my point. Chris is like, I never look at that. Well, Switzerland just cut interest rates. And they have a, they, their central bank wants a weak Swiss franc. Okay. So um, you're, you're on a winning horse, but it's not coming in first place. And so you want to get your logic put together first and foremost. Now, it's already quite elevated. Yeah, that's true. But, um, oh, it's a good trade fundamentally okay so you got to follow the monetary policy of the central banks okay so you're on a fine trade it's good uh, but there probably was a better trade Well, you wouldn't be doing it now. Like if you walk into New York and you just start throwing down trades now, yeah, you're in trouble. Um, you're not planning ahead, right? So you'd be planning for tomorrow. Okay. Or, or you do something like you've decided if you were going to do anything on this pair, you would do it as a bull, right? So you just, you know, play it as a scalper. Right? You can filter filter everything as a scalper. Now, most scalpers are, you know, trend agnostic. They don't care if they're bulls or bears. You can filter that through and say, well, I would only be a bull. And if it becomes bearish, uh, well, there's a lot of risk to that. And you just kind of would walk away. So you could say here at the open, uh, you know, on a five minute chart or a one minute chart, you're going to look to go north. Cool. How many people here have signed up for the Tradars um, daily email? I think of the four trade plans I looked at yesterday at Forex.today, so one, one, uh, one day ago, I think four of, all four worked out. Have you guys been following some of that? Yeah. Uh, it's a pretty good email for 61 cents a day. <laughs> <laughs> it's it ain't too bad yeah it does save a time yeah so anyway so that's this is one way that you can uh be using this um you could be on this Euro Swissy now on a one minute or a five minute and you say, is it bullish now? Is it bullish now? Is it bullish now? And when you, when the answer to your question is yes, you engage. I want to be, oh yeah, yeah, this is an old version already. Refresh. Go to sonars. Just want to keep an eye on the news. Ten minutes and thirty six seconds. Aussie Yen. USD Mexican peso and oil have all worked for you on traders over the last week. Yes. Nuno's enjoying it. Yeah. Right on, guys. Guys. 
kind of just looking around the, the world here. Okay. What do you think of this? At some point, you must make a decision and decide, do you point your pivots down? Which is a fancy way of saying you're no longer a bull and you put it into bearish mode. And you take this down. What do you think? What do you think? All right, let's do it anonymously. Okay. Great British Pound versus NZD. Would you be bearish now? Yes, no, add option, not sure. All right, this is anonymous. Remember, nobody knows what you actually clicked on. Okay, well, how about this? So, a couple of hours ago, the following coinciding trade setups have been identified and forecast a similar potential market move. The following assumptions have been made. At least a 20 pip move, at least... The key level and chart pattern must be at least, we're at most five candles apart. Okay, pound kiwi short. A couple hours ago, breakout price 210. Probability of a, 16, a 59 uh, pip move, 68.91%. And it just highlighted my trade plan. So in the next, right, what you should be doing or could be doing. Again, you were emailed this two hours ago at 6.13 a.m. So you could now be on a fiver waiting for your op. Creating plan, plan A's or plan B's. You could say, I might want to kick it off the 21. I might want to kick it off the daily pivot. I might want to look for a roll reversal. But you're not thinking buy. The, uh, the AI noticed two trade plans that agree with each other. One on the 30 minute and one on the 60 minute. There's a triangle on the hourly chart. And then there's simply just a lower, low, lower, high scenario on the uh, uh, a breaking support or, or trading down to support. So basically top of the channel, which you can see here if I were to draw it. Let me delete this. All right. You can see uh, okay, there was a top there and then a top here, right? So back down to where? The bottom of support. So completely different trade than this one. This is a breach of the apex. Different time frame, different pattern, but they noticed that, right? Tradars noticed it was happening at the same time. And then because it knows in the past how often a triangle has worked and in the past how much this type of a trade has worked, 
it then does some calculations to produce a probability. Which does not predict future results. It's just telling you what happened in the past. So is this a day trade? Well, it would start as a day trade, yeah. Because it's 60 pips. It's not a scalp. But the thing is, all right, the thing is, we also know on top of that, doing our own analysis, this is an out, okay, and this is an in. Okay, this is an out, this is an M3. That's a sell. So now we could say, dude, if this rolls over at this price, heads down here, there's more than a reasonable chance in the following days it, it heads down further. So it could lead into a swing. So if you see on the left here, Tradars gave us a probability of 68% up. And look, it went long. And now it's flipping it around. Why? It's only technical analysis. Okay. And so it's trend agnostic per se. It just saw bearish trade plans on two time frames at the same time. So there you go. Cool, right? Doesn't mean it'll work. But it might, when I ask you, what do you think? Yes or no? It might use, if you use the data, it's not making your decision, but it's helpful to know that almost 70% of the time in the past, it did produce a down, at least on the short run, at least for a day. Right? All right, two minutes and 48 seconds. Cool, right? Cool. I should probably add a a picture, huh? Do 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 It's not so bad. It's not so bad. And I want to be with you. Giving me the best days of my life. <laughs> I'm adding an avatar. Do, 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 do. Mm, mm, mm. Do, do, do. Yeah, good enough, huh? Coolio. Going to save that. Did it say? Oh, silly. I, oops. Anyways, I'll deal with that in a bit. Let's go back to the sonars. One minute. Bradley says, uh, well, if, if, you, if you have the daily email, it's sent out daily. Uh, but if you actually subscribe to the online service, it's all real time. So this was 29 minutes ago. This was two hours ago. Okay, these are all two hours ago, three hours ago. Here's USD Mexican peso. Okay, it's all real time. Yeah. All right, 26 seconds. Okay, you can look at it here. The ET, Bradley. 
You mean the daily email comes out six o'clock in the morning, pre New York, London lunch. Yes. Okay, and now notice it's vibrating with anticipation. Very cool. Another thing I could point out is if you want to put these on your calendar, Tradar says there's nothing really important on the calendar until GDP on Thursday. Okay, you can go ahead and put that on your schedule. You can schedule it. United States GDP. Cool, put it on your calendar. Give yourself an alert. It's cool, right? Yeah. Cool, right? I know, right? Durable goods. So what is a durable good? Think of it as a refrigerator. Now, if you've lost your job and you're worried about money, okay, if you've lost your job and you're worried about money, and then you know that's exactly when your fridge is going to go out. Your, your fridge stops keeping your ice cream cold. So what do you do? You have to get a new fridge. Do you buy a new fridge or do you buy a pre-owned fridge? You buy a pre-owned fridge. Does it show up in durable goods orders? No. Does it show up in GDP? No. Because the fridge shows up in the original purchase when, in, when some factory like KitchenAid in Michigan made the fridge and then sold it to you through a retail distributor. Okay, great. And that gets counted towards GDP. You can't count it again if it's sold then to you pre-owned. Pre but that's what you're going to do, right? And so we start to see that in the economic data where durable goods orders start falling because people don't have the confidence, right? But if they are buying new fridges, well, at least they have money or credit. Now, poor people usually have money and rich people usually have credit. <laughs> so anyway, it's cool, right? Okay. So the number was greater than expected. So what do you want to trade? The, some of these have 85s. This has 87 USD Swiss franc. You could look at this. And here's all the past performance. When it was greater than expected. Okay. okay. April 26th. It dropped and then closed higher. So remember, this is, uh, actually, I don't remember when this is. Hang on. Uh, 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 um, what did I pick? Okay, on a f four hours. Okay, news came out. This is now, I guess, right? 85%, 87.5% up. This is now, this is live, because there's nothing in the future. Okay. The consensus was 1.1. It came out 1.4 with a delta of 0.3. So Tradar says four-hour trend is likely to be up 87.5% that we're on our way. 
How does it get to the conclusion, you ask? Okay. Well, in December, it dropped and then closed higher. 15-minute chart. It dropped for an hour and then closed four hours later, higher than we started. So you buy a dip. Back in October, it dropped, but you were a bull. So let it drop, and then it closed higher four hours later. In September, the news came out greater than expected. Price dropped, but you're a bull, so you maybe bought it, and it closed higher. Back in July, it just went up and up and up and closed higher. Back in June, it kind of went up, it came down, so a buy the dip scenario went up and maybe hit some sort of pivot point or something and it collapsed. Now, it's still closed higher, but uh, hopefully you got some profit first. And this one went up and then pulled back, buy, up, pull back, buy, up, 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 hit some sort of target and then collapsed, but still closed higher than it opened. This one dropped, but you're a bull, so you find a reason to buy and it closed higher. So what it's saying is there's kind of like uh, different things that can happen with today's chart. It's saying in the past, if you were a bull based on this analysis, even if it fell for a while, let's say for an hour, you might look for an up because much of the time that happened. So it's not an instant buy. It's not necessarily a scalp. But you can say, well, I'm going to look for bullish technical analysis on a small time frame okay, before I get involved. And so this was, oh, what did I click on? Oh, man, what did I click on? Does anyone remember? I think it was USD Swiss franc, wasn't it? A four-hour chart. Now, you can do this on smaller time frames, too. Uh, this was just the four hour. So USD Swiss franc, I believe it was. Okay, so you could go to. Yeah, but which one? Remember, the two hour, the four hour, and the daily are all going to have different analysis, right? Uh, so you get rid of that and you go to USD. Do I, I don't even have it here. Don't even have it here. Uh -huh. Okay. And we go to a five-minute chart, let's say. And you're in the business of what? Buying dips? So that's how a scalper would do it. Bradley says, what is active? That, those are trade plans that are in fruition. They're, they're in play. So Bradley, when you're on radars, these are trade plans that are forming. Okay, these are all trade plans that are forming. They're possible trade plans. But at some point, the pattern fulfills and you get the break and it goes to the next level. So you get your A, so it's identified here on RAND, A, B, C, D, and now it's looking for a break and all that kind of stuff. But when, it, when the pattern fulfills and it's an active trade, it gets pushed over here, and then it looks and says, okay, the pattern came together properly, so let's go to 4X, okay? And now moves the stop to break even and is more about mo uh, moving targets up as the the trade is live so to speak so it goes from a possibility to a probability like 83 point uh, 83% 82% 82% 71% how does it know well these are patterns and it Right, so this is a head and shoulders pattern, and I know f by uh, by my own research in the back tester when you go look at forex um, head and shoulders patterns, 
it's seen this pattern over a thousand times. And it knows how many times it's worked. Because it remembers every single instance in Forex that it saw a head and shoulders pattern. And it's telling you, it recognizes this pattern on this asset class, and there's a 71% chance, and it can prove it to you. Okay, and of course, you can change your probabilities, right? So like you can look at the st stock market. Cool, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, it is amazing. All right. So anyways, here we are. Yeah, Richard, but you have to understand that's what Bostic does. So when you see the dot plot, it doesn't tell you who is who. But it, if you know your Fed people, you, you, you look at that dot and go, Bostic. So like, I mean, look, it, it's not new news. Right? So you're like, oh, well. Yeah, and Bradley, open an account at uh, Trader's Way, too. Dude, well, you're at it. So great on bio... Oops, I turned it off, of course. I always knew that. Biohacking my, my own... Uh, Biohacking my diet, and I'm tracking it real time through my through constant real time analysis of my bloodstream. <laughs> and there's my, you see that flat line? That's my uh, sugar levels in my blood, and that flat line is astonishing. Compared to what normally happens. Yeah. And I, I'm, it, it's just really neat. It's really neat. So now I'm creating through constant analysis and testing, constant analysis and testing, I am custom making a diet for my human body. And it would not work for most people. Oh, Bradley's been with Trader's Way for three. Right on. Yeah, well, I suppose it, if you were measuring your heart, right, Jim? <laughs> that would be bad. <laughs> no, so like at breakfast time, I used to get a spike. I would eat healthy. Like, for example, I, I would guess I ate more healthy than the average person. So I would eat... A, um, a bowl of chicken noodle soup, okay? And I would get a spike because I consumed m more food. And you would see it there. It would be like, like obvious, okay? Now, not a, I'm diabetic, so it, it would, you couldn't get a dramatic move like that, but I would, and you're trying to avoid that. But you're like, but Wayne, I'm not diabetic, so I don't need this stuff. Oh, so you think it spikes for me, so it's bad for me, but it's not bad for you because you don't get a spike? No, your body is reacting. You just don't have high sugar levels, but you're going to, it's it's still not good for you. Whatever spike me is bad for me, but it's also bad for you. You just don't, you're not diabetic, so you don't have that response. But it look at that, like... I ate two pieces of fried chicken and six egg whites. And it looks like I didn't even eat breakfast. And on top of that, I've already consumed almost 100% of my daily intake of fat. I've, I've had a massive amount of fat. But 
pure fat, not saturated fat. It's sort of like if you drank a bottle of olive oil, it would probably just pass right through you. If you ate a pound of butter, you'd gain weight. So anyways, uh, it's really interesting to be able to do that, track all that in real time. Super cool. I, again, technology is amazing. And I'm, I'm adjusting by changing my diet. You know, I should build some AI to then analyze what I'm eating and analyzing my, my body's response and be a dietitian for me and help me you know, have it you know, create recipes and stuff. So I had a huge meal last night, huge, like two servings. By two servings, I mean two giant plates of food, um, but did not spike my sugar levels at all. It's really crazy. We have such good technology now. Biohacking in real time. So I'm starting to learn how, lo how long it takes my body to digest food. It's really interesting. You, I can see it in the charts. Oop, looks like uh, she's, she's breaking through those meatballs. <laughs> Come on, tummy. Huh? You're opening, you're looking at your phone and watching your stomach digest. It's, I think it's extraordinary. But here we are, so we got some more up on the news. Thank you, Tradars. Would would I normally be trading USD Swiss franc against durable goods? I don't know. Well, probably not, huh? Up to 92. Okay, so we can analyze this uh, in a more traditional fashion. Uh, so I like the daily confluence, and then we're bulls, so we can look at the bullish. And we're like, oh, no. Yeah. Oh, no. So anyways, durable goods was a big number. It seems like, the American consumer is still spending, huh? Is there a need for the Fed to dramatically cut interest rates as soon as possible or the economy is going to crash in, into the abyss? <laughs> You're like, I need a fridge. And it's got to be a nice one. And I need it from Home Depot. And I, I you know, are people still buying stainless steel? That's going to be, oh, so COVID. I think the, the new appliances now are glass. Have you seen them? They're like white. They're almost like translucent tile fridges. They're pretty nice. So the thing is, are people buying Frigidaire? Are they buying KitchenAid? Or are they buying Gaganau? So that's in the next level of uh, economic study. Who's buying? In many, in many instances, um, the economy is showing that wealthier people are now spending money, where during the COVID period, um, Lower income households were spending most of the money because, well, they they were they had government stimulus and they were spending the money on things that you spend money quickly on, like food, shelter, okay, medicine. Wealthy people, well, they didn't need to do that. Plus, they know the economy's in in rough shape because of COVID, so they're like, well, we're not going out spending big money. Uh, we're not going to go on a cruise this year. We're not going to our timeshare in Mexico this year. 
you know, we're not buying new appliances, you know, because of all these different things. And you're just like, well, we're not going to do anything because it wouldn't be prudent. You don't have to do anything if you have money and credit. Well, now time has gone by and we know those with lower income have spent all the money they got from uh, stimulus. So that's all gone. Um, lots of money has gone on credit cards and credit card defaults are starting to be really quite high. And uh, car leases are starting to be really high. You could, this is people that don't have money for a car, so they'll basically rent a car. Uh, and they're starting to default. But then, so who's buying all the who's buying all these durable goods and we might find it's you know it's not frigid air people maybe it's kitchen aid people and gaganow people let's pull up a gaganow i don't even know how to spell gaganow um gagan <laughs> oh my god it's gonna be so bad uh appliances kitchen appliances Now, artificial intelligence should know that even I spelled it horribly. It should know what I'm talking about. Of course, it doesn't. Gagan now. Gagan. It's a G-I-E. Gagan. Gagan. Ow. Is it gag? Gagan, no, no, that's how I spelled it. Let's see if it figures it out. Oh, here it is. Yes, I did spell it right. Okay. Let's see what they come up with. Yeah, it's that kind of stuff. Oh, uh, yes. Nice kitchen, right? Anyway, so is it these people? I was wondering if they'd give us some prices. No, of course not. So who's spending the money, right? And that would take more research. So we're definitely in a, a tough situation here because uh, we are in a target zone. What would cost $2,000 each? Like an appliance would cost a lot more than that. Like, I don't know. I don't know if Gaganow makes fridges. But, um, yeah. Like, I don't have a fancy pants Gaganow. But I know I, during COVID I had to buy a, a fridge. And I think it was like ten or $12,000. Dude. And of course, nobody likes a fridge. So every day I get flack from the family. <laughs> like, dude, we needed a fridge in the middle of COVID. COVID. We were on the, we bought a fridge. We bought a KitchenAid at Home Depot. As soon as it died, I went to Home Depot. I'm like, you got this fridge, right? And they're like, oh yeah, we got this fridge. We can have it delivered in two weeks. I'm like, sweet, great, boom. 
two weeks turned into two months turned into six months still no fridge yeah so i had to go out and find another one right was it uh, was it one no it was nothing special but again uh covid you know but it's commercial grade um but not not fancy pants um mm, 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 mm. all right so anyways there's that so we're up you have to make decisions trade ours simply says in the past it closed higher than than the news open it doesn't tell you when to take profit it doesn't take you how doesn't tell you how much profit they're all different Let's take a look at yen pairs. Yen pairs. Talking about yen pairs. Okay, we'll look at these ugly charts. Let's see. Uh, I'll change the template a little bit just to be similar to what we've already been using. Pivot points, daily confluence, bullish. Okay. So now what? Well, we're definitely at resistance and we got to fight through this. Okay, this is a kickoff of a buy zone. Okay, now maybe kick off moving averages. And there's nowhere to go right now because nothing really happened yesterday. We hit the fair market price here in a bottomed out low, lower high, low, lower high, low higher high, higher low, 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 right? Just real simple stuff, really basic price action. Go out to the 4H and the area that, right, that you would start looking for that change is in here. So it came down to that level and now you have the change. So if you were a bull, you would start being bullish. I could also move my stop now, okay, and lock in uh, 69 pips. Okay. So there's some hope there, right? We don't know. But do you think we can head up to this target? Maybe. So I did a short. I've been practicing with shorts. Tradars.cup. I guess I have to hit reload. Now I can't hear sound. What a weird app. How come there's no sound? It looks like there's sound. All right, good morning. Let's go to the tradars.co trade plan of the day. Let me log in to emerging patterns that are happening right now. Logging into Forex. So right now, about an hour ago, tradars have an active trade plan for Aussie uh, Japanese yen. It broke through resistance level at 99.10 at 6.30 this morning. And so it's 7.22, right? Possible bullish price movement forecast for the next 22 hours up and towards 99.74, maybe as high as what? Uh, 100.5. So it looks like uh, 
the trade plan for Forex today. Enjoy. Good luck. All right. Good morning. Cool. So that's on a 15. So that's already three hours old. So it probably noticed a breach somewhere in here. Morning, Nalu. Louie, Louie. Okay, Al, why? Are you a bull on the dollar or the U.S. dollar or a bear on the U.S. dollar? Okay. Um, in a sec, Anthony. All right. So, uh, Aussie dollar long. L Y wants Aussie dollar long. Uh -huh. uh, okay. So you look at this chart and you like it. Uh, I don't want to look at it. Just the look of the chart to me, um, even if it goes up for here, I guess. Um, I don't know. I don't like it. That's it. Sorry. Uh, Euro yen. Okay. Okay. So I've already pointed this out a couple of days ago, in uh, maybe even late last week. So you have a higher high. Oops. Let me get this. Uh, okay. You have a higher high, which sets up a higher low somewhere. You don't know where. And what I've done is I've looked at this level. And I projected it here. So my guess, remember, when you're up here, this is my guess. Somewhere around there, I want to look to be a buy. Okay. So then price drops into that level. Let me zoom in and uh, we'll put an X on it. And then drop into, what, a 15-minute chart? Sure. Okay. Find that X somewhere in there. So we know, based on the trade plan I created for you uh, two days in advance. Okay, let me change the color because there's a lot going on here. Somewhere around here, you want to look to be bullish if you're a bull. This happens to be right around, it's not perfect, but get over that, right around the daily M2, which is a buying pivot. Okay. And that was then followed by price action. Higher high, higher low. Higher high, higher low. Higher high, higher low. Higher high, higher low. Higher high. Double top, but at the close of the market. Asia fade. Okay. Bump, 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 bump. Some, something like that now. Zachary says, what is an M2? It's 
something that is going to change your life now that you've asked? Okay, you need to un understand and master pivot points. And I don't mean that in any other way, except I'm telling you, I've been trading with pivot points nearly 20 years before anybody else. And I am personally 100% convinced they're useful. So, Zachary, I personally, personally believe you should learn and master pivot points. I don't think they're the only thing. I think the most important thing is price action. But as a leading indicator, uh, they're a key component of what I love to do. Now, here's the sales pitch. I will teach you everything I know for $8,888. Nah, just kidding. $888. There you go. You can go to Investor Bootcamp, pay $888. And I'll teach you everything you need to know about pivot points. Well, in fact, because you're special to me, and I care about you personally, Zachary, <laughs> if you sign up right now, you'll get it for $88. But today only. Wait, it's been $88 since uh, COVID-19 hit us. So anyways, there you go. Uh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> so it's very accessible, Anthony. But in, in all seriousness, uh, uh, I could trade without pivot points, but I, I don't want to. Uh, the number one thing is price action. Yeah, I just choose pivot points. Yeah. Well, I think it was. Does anyone remember what it was before COVID? Was it 888? I think it was, wasn't it? Or was it 382? I, I don't know. I don't remember. It was either 382 or 888. I can't remember. Richard says, uh, oh, Miss Red paid, yeah. Yeah. I suppose it depends on what year. Yeah. Actually, I think it was closer to 90%, but but who knows. Anyways. Um I think it I think it was, Jim. Uh, like in the in the days of the earliest days of FX boot camp, I think the deal went like this: it was um, three thousand six hundred dollars a year, but it, on the anniversary, uh, on your one year anniversary, I sent you an email, and it said if you prepay for your second year. So that means you had to be thrilled on your first year. If you want to stay and you're willing to commit for one year, uh, it's 2,400. But now, today. So it went from 3,600 to 2,400, but paid up in advance. And it was like that for a decade. Yeah. Yeah. And then any astute member of FX Bootcamp that had been around in those days for that period of time, I'm sure you could calculate how many people were in Bootcamp, how much you guessed they were paying, 
how much you think my daily um, expenses were because I had a whole staff of coaches and servers and software and stuff. I think if you were astute enough, you would add all that up and go, holy crap, this guy doesn't make any money. <laughs> I mean, it wouldn't take you long at all. You're like, dude, this guy's not making any money. Yeah. And then when we were hit with the 2008 financial crisis, instead of laying people off, I hired people. Yeah. And once again, you would add all that up and go, I don't think this guy's making any money. Hmm. So anyways, now it's 88 bucks. <laughs> No, it's 88 bucks. Yep. Cool. Right on. Mike says uh, yeah, the description was for... No, it was never a lifetime. That's impossible. I can't even legally do it. Yeah. No, Mike, it was never, ever, ever lifetime. Yeah. All right, we can move. Uh, exotics are trying to zip around again. Okay, and, uh, you know, if you go back to this time frame, you can see we recently had the massive pullback. Okay, and then a re resumption. And then we go in here to the smaller time frame, and then you see this massive pullback and peaked out on the 19th, and then a resumption. Yeah. Uh,. Yeah, pretty interesting. Now we need to figure out, you know, what the what the central bank wants to do next, right? And you can measure this to say you think it's going to stay in a trend, but if you're a bull, right, risk, which is risk off, you would look for something more like this. So you could measure the trend down for the measure of the break, you can measure the trend down for the lower, low, lower high. Okay, because that's going to be somebody's double or triple bottom, right? Now, we filter it out. You you know, you're probably looking at this at, as a carry trade. Uh, it'll become a better tr carry trade when the Fed cuts. But the Bank of Mexico is already cutting, right? Okay. Fantastic central bank, by the way. One of my favorite central banks in the entire world. And they've cut interest rates to only 11%. See? Bloop. Okay, it was 11 and a quarter, now it's 11. Okay, up to 11 and a quarter. Pause, 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 cut. Cool, right? What a neat website, right?
Would not let me just change it that way. Oh, it does it. Oh, look at that. It flips it. January 21st, 2008. And then you click it and it goes 2008. Oh, that's interesting. Cool. Okay. So they were cutting post COVID. They stabilized. They raise, they raise, they raise, 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 and then a cut. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, well, I consider Mexico an emerging market, but not a frontier market like uh, like Turkey. And I, I have a lot of respect for the Mexican central bank uh, and their policies, and I have no respect for the Turkish central bank and policy. I don't think they're independent. And um, I don't quite understand the policies of the federal government of Turkey, which or I guess they may not be federal, but the central government. But again, that's not for me to to say or talk about. I don't know. I'm not Turkish, right? So they can do whatever they want. Um, I just don't really understand it that much, but there might be a lot that I don't understand, which is fair. Um, but I don't believe their central bank is terribly independent. And I understand much of their problem has to do with a shortage of foreign currency in the vaults of the central bank. So why is it that foreign companies or countries don't want to do business with Turkey? Or is it that Turkey isn't doing any business? So you get in that situation where if you don't import and export as a country, you're not going to have any foreign reserves in your central bank. Or you have an industry of importing and exporting, but nobody wants to do business with you. Therefore, you don't have any central uh, uh, foreign currency. And then if your debt is in foreign currency, you're in trouble. So anyways, uh, so Bank of Mexico, great. Um, Turkey, uh, not something that I, uh, I play with. Yeah. Lira, uh, no so much. It's, I consider it frontier, and that's not sort of part of my portfolio, so to speak. Are you guys going to use these uh, daily sh YouTube shorts if I do them? I have to do it in less than a minute. A very... All right, good morning. Let's go to the tradars.co trade plan of the day. Let me log in to him. So anyways, I don't know. Yeah. Yosef's is very helpful. <laughs> really? Cool. I got to get a better mic because I, I found the best way to actually do the videos is actually on my phone. And you're like, well, obviously, right? Because that's how they're kind of designed. But um, but then you don't have a good a microphone. So, uh, so I'll see if I can do that. all right so uh i got a busy day bro uh my last meeting starts at 5 p.m with accountants what am i gonna eat man i'm not even gonna eat dinner till seven anyways busy 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 day oh busy day Woo! Oh, busy day. 
So I guess I should go. The stock market's going to open soon. So we covered uh, we covered a few things in exotic. We uh, you know all like the commodity stuff. You you know I'm a bull on gold and oil. And uh, oops, that didn't go anywhere. And I'm sure you've already seen those trades. Right, I'm sure you've seen all of those trades like uh, gold had a giant spike, but I planned it all out yesterday with this Andrews pitchfork. I mean, it's all been done for you. Uh, so now it's like, now what about, now it's about tomorrow. Are you going to do it again tomorrow? So, you know, maybe around here. Okay. Yeah, where do you get the energy? Uh, yeah, well, that's not an easy thing. Um, but I can tell you, yesterday I slept for about 19 hours. <laughs> so yesterday was a bit of a catch-up day. Yeah. Yeah, pretty, pretty remarkable. Yeah, and and had... Yeah, and had no problem doing it. I when I went to bed at uh, you know, the normal sleepy time, I was worried. I'm like, I could be up all night. And I put my head to my pillow, in less than one minute, fell asleep. Never even woke up in the middle of the night. Yeah. Uh, Richard says, think you need a better chair. Yeah, you know, it's funny when I do sit down in the morning in this chair, it is very good. Like it, the, the lumbar, the lower back support that's built into this chair is, well, even though I've had this chair for probably six or seven years, it's still really fantastic. Uh, it was good money. I think it was somewhere between $1,000 and $2,000. But if you've sat in a chair as much as I have, you know it's money well spent. It's an investment. And so after all these years of using it, I just even just, I think it was the Mon Sunday or Monday, I sat in the chair and I'm like, ooh, this is a good chair. Yeah, so money well spent for sure. Uh, especially when you do this a lot. I think the biggest, uh, you know, sort of trader hack is I used to sit with my hand on the mouse because you're always moving your mouse and you know and you're looking at things and maybe you're adding but the more you do all of this right the more you're going to have arm and shoulder problems so I try to do it mentally right I can look at my chart and these hands are free. I can. I don't need to draw it, do I? Why do I need? I draw it for you. I don't need to draw it for me. Right? And then you could do things like, yeah, I want to buy somewhere around here. Now you're done, right? And you try not to mess with it. Make sure you got the smiley face. Do I have a smiley face? Yes. What kind of trade plan is it? You can you can check your EA. It's a 33333, so it's a bit of a scalp. But you're like, nah, I want to do a 150333. And you can change it to a swing, but now you're not messing around with your charts as much. You know, you got to have your clarity. That's if I was swing trading it, right? So I'd have to make that decision before. Or I can leave the 33 on it and have it head up. And then adjust my stop. So like, let's say you're in between. You're like, okay, this is a day trade, but I'm not certain it's going to lead into a swing trade yet. So that, oops, that 150 might be too much, right? So you go back to your EA. And you're just like, no, nah, let's do a 55, 333. And 55 is enough for a day trade. 333 is obviously a swing trade. But by tomorrow, if I'm in, 
I can move my stop. Okay. But you do want to like do all of that with the least amount of hand and shoulder movement as possible. And that means you need to look at your charts in such a way where maybe you see multiple time frames. Okay. Let's not do gold, that's expensive. And uh, you look at multiple time frames with the least amount of work. Make your decision with the least amount of work and then set up your trade. So the classic way for me to trade going back to FX boot camp 20 years ago. Okay. I would have this more of a four hour. Let's do it this way. That would typically be a four hour. This would typically be a five or a 15. And this would be a one hour. And the idea with this is I can see all the the major time frames that I need without uh, changing my charts. So can you see the chart on the left? The euro dollar one hour. I could make a decision, for example. Let's say I made this decision. I'm not saying it's the right decision. I'm just saying it's a decision. I want to buy around uh, 108 and a half or a little, little bit lower than 108 and a half. And my eyeball is looking at this area here and the, the, these combinations of moving averages. So in my mind, I can say this is my next move. Okay, which is the same as saying I'm going to ride the moving average way over here on the four hour. So I see the four hour, I see the one hour. I want to do it without moving my mouse. And so now what I'm doing is I'm watching the five minute looking for bullishness. And when I decide to be a bull, I pull the trigger. And now the only thing I care about is when the five minute turns bullish. Could be a 15 minute. I'm okay with that. Whatever works for you. Doesn't matter to me. Okay. So what you're eyeballing really is this, aren't you? Basic price action. So again, if you look, if you set your charts up like I do historically, not the way that I go through my coaching routine with you guys, but if you look at my normal process, I'm trying to be efficient. So how do I look at multiple time frames? Well, I'm looking at the four hour, the one hour, the five minute, and I'm looking at the short term indice here. Now, you might not like this. You might want to have it be more like uh, more set up more for day trading and position trading. Okay. Of course, conversely, you could look at this and in particular at that index and say, well, you'd rather be a bear than a bull. All right. So are you what? How are you setting that up? You probably need a significant down and then followed by a lower high. And well, that's not likely to happen in the next few hours. So that would be tomorrow. For some of you guys, you're talking about uh, your trading habits and behaviors. You know, if you're learning to day trade, for example, you should spend most of your time analyzing. Find, right. Finding like the buying price on a four hour and then letting price come back to you. Because if you're a bull, you're always buying a dip. If you're a bear, you're always selling a rise. 
So it has to come back to your price. Maybe use a limit order for that. Maybe you pull the trigger. But when you see a trade execute, your, your stop and your limit should already be done. I use the OCO. Or you manually do it, whatever. And then go for an hour walk. Imagine every time you took a trade, you couldn't watch it. You take a trade, it costs you an hour of your time. There's going to be a cost. You're not going to be able to put five more trades on in the next 20 minutes. That might be over trading while you're going for a walk. If you don't like it, get a dog. Okay, you might also want to have like a, a day, a day, the trade of the day type strategy where around a certain point in time, you decide, you know, you're going to do it like, like, for example, if I'm trading gold, sort of around that 7am time period, I trade gold. Now you've probably taken the, the training that I've taught you on gold, but let's just say around, around seven. I'm in a gold trade, and then I would go for a walk. Come back and be ready around 8.30. The news would have come out by 8.30, and you're probably setting up your stock market open type trade. And it's a different trade than your gold. See, your gold is a front run, and your uh, stock market is more like yeah, you know, like for me, a classic move on the stock market would be something like this. I know I'm a bull. Now, it could be some other asset. I don't care. Uh, Euro dollar, but let's say around the open of the stock market. And uh, I go into that situation already knowing my intent. I'm a buyer. I'm a bull. Why? I've already done all my research. That's why like you know, um, a London breakout strategy, in my humble opinion, is stupid. It's for people that can't make a decision. Well, I love making decisions. So therefore, I've made a decision. I'm a bull or I'm a bear. But and it doesn't change every day because I use macroeconomics as well as a longer term technical analysis. So if I if I see an uptrend on the four hour or daily, dude, guess what? It's an uptrend. I'm a bull. I buy dips. So now if you take that strength with you into some sort of market open, at least this is what I do. I walk in and I'm, I'm a bull. And you look for a dip. If it drops, I'm buying it. Now, Tradars showed you that earlier this morning. It said, what, 80 something percent of the time it went up. But even in the times it went up, probably 50 percent of the time it went down before going up and closing higher, which means you had to know you were a bull and you love the fact that for three 15 minute candles in a row, it was red. You're like, look at this. It's red. It's red. Oh, my God. A gift from the Forex gods. It's red. Then the fourth candle does not make a lower low. Fifth candle makes a higher high gone long. And then what? Drop your stop and take a walk. And maybe quite literally. Okay. Take your dog for a walk. Bring some poop bags, just in case your trade plan fails. <laughs> but anyways, that's how the Wayne do. I got to go. I got to jump, babe. That was real. The markets are open. Ding, 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 ding. Thank you for being part of Forex. today. Hope you're loving life and living large. I will see you at four so we can do the hard, impossible work that most people traders. In fact, probably 98% of traders are unwilling or incapable of doing. What is this impossible task, you ask? We are going to download economic reports and actually read them. 
Remember, that's too difficult. Too much of a burden for most traders. And yet we know most traders lose money. So if you want to at least behave differently than most, maybe it'll make you make a difference. Do what most people are not willing to do, the work. So let's do the work together, huh? Let's do the homework together. I'll see you at 4 p.m. for that. I'll also record it and provide links to all the research. Why? Because I can, and it's a beautiful thing. Peace on earth. May the pips be with you. May our profits be above average. That just happened.